Number three, of course, no surprise, we can't talk painting without talking about tonal values. Yes, I'm always going on about these. I've already put out various videos on this. I would hop back and check those out for a little bit more detail. But if we think about composition as the foundation of the painting and the, the draftsmanship or the drawing element is the quality of what we are building and how we are building it, then maybe we could say that the tonal values are the cement that holds the whole thing together. We can use tonal values to create light and shadow, shape and form, drama and atmosphere, to create depth or mood, points of interest. We can use it to simplify complex areas and so, so much more. Little shapes of different values can give the illusion of detail, but also equally too many little shapes and too many different changes in value can look fussy or it can stop the painting from holding together well. In contrast, then large areas of similar or the same tonal value can create soft focus and also important areas of kind of visual quiet that kind of sit back and let the more complex areas speak out a little bit more. Whilst not always necessary in all forms of painting, for the representational way that I work and many people work, simple patterns of light and shadow underpinning a painting are vital and getting the values, the tonal values, working well together is an important consideration, one of the major considerations. So much to talk about here, but I usually just come back to asking myself, as I paint an area, is this a light, a dark, or somewhere in between, a mid-tone? Then beyond that, is it a darker mid-tone from the shadow group, or is it a lighter mid-tone from the lighter group? But all the time, I'm trying to keep my, my range of tonal values as simple as possible, and my patterns of light and dark very simple too, and that then feeds back into our composition, and also in many ways feeds back into our draftsmanship or our drawing.